Industries presents the Avail Glove Bag Workshop, a step-by-step -step instructional guide. In this video, we review the state-of-the-art standards of asbestos removal using glove bags, and we'll instruct you on how to take advantage of the features and benefits of our new Avail Quick Twist Glove Bag System. This video will instruct you on all phases of the glove bag removal technique, their selection, safety equipment and precautions, site preparation, equipment and tools, installation and removal, cleanup and decontamination. In addition to our precautions, always consult and comply with all current laws, regulations and procedures. Serious health risks result from asbestos exposure. The fine airborne particles that are disturbed when asbestos is removed are especially dangerous. Glove bags are recognized by regulatory agencies and industry experts as the safest and most efficient method to remove asbestos pipe insulation. It is the only method of removal where the worker is isolated from the stripping of asbestos. The most common asbestos application is on pipe insulation constituting millions of miles running through our factories, schools, homes, and other buildings. Grayling's position of leadership in the asbestos abatement industry is a result of the overwhelming success of our Avail glove bags. Avail glove bags have been used to safely remove over 50 million feet of pipe insulation around the world. Avail glove bags are used extensively in the United States, Canada, Puerto Rico, Holland, Germany, France, Belgium, Italy, England, Australia, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Philippines, and Japan. Since 1986, nearly 80% of all asbestos pipe insulation abatement projects have utilized Avail glove bags. The Avail system has led the industry with innovative designs that are unsurpassed in efficiency, speed, cost-effectiveness, ease of use, and safety. Grayling has been granted and is licensed under several patents that recognize the unique glove bag features that make Avail the leading choice of asbestos abatement professionals everywhere. Avail design standards have been adopted by regulatory agencies and are widely recognized as being the industry standard. Innovations pioneered by Grayling include glue sealed glove sleeve assemblies, no bottom seam construction, vertical pipe glove bags, large diameter pipe glove bags, extended run glove bags, and now the quick twist debris chamber design. The quick twist design has two distinct work zones, the removal area and the debris chamber. This two-stage design makes it safer and easier for workers to remove and securely separate debris-laden bags from pipe. The Quick Twist incorporates a larger work area with a narrower and taller debris chamber so that less bunching is required to twist close the glove bag. The increased work area gives the worker greater freedom inside the glove bag to access difficult pipe insulation. Each debris chamber is tall enough to handle intact sections of pipe insulation. Less breakage of debris means lower fiber counts. After waste is funneled into the chamber, the worker easily twists it closed at the top and tapes the neck to prevent escape of dangerous fibers. The quick twist debris chamber is more puncture and tear resistant than any glove bag ever made. Made from PhD, a specially engineered polymer that incorporates all the strength and durability of low and high density polyethylene. All Avail Quick Twist glove bags come packaged in a convenient dispensing box that protects the unused bags, damaged due to handling. The bags are on a roll and can be cut off and used in sections of one, two, three, or more. Six mil is standard construction. The Quick Twist is available in four convenient sizes. The QT10, which handles pipe diameters up to 10 inches, with a 42 inch to 54 inch horizontal work area. The QT14, for pipe diameters 10 inches to 14 inches and 48 inches to 60 inches horizontal work area. The QT18 for pipe diameters 14 inches to 18 inches and 54 inches to 66 inches horizontal work area. And the QT30 
for pipe diameters 18 inches to 30 inches and 60 inches to 72 inches horizontal work area. The Avail Quick Twist Extended Run Glove Bag is a portable, sealed, disposable work chamber that attaches directly to pipe. The glove bag acts as a mini containment area and provides a barrier that isolates workers from asbestos exposure during abatement. Whether it is full-scale abatement or repair and maintenance activities, glove bags are the industry standard for removing asbestos from pipes. A glove bag consists of a clear polyethylene containment area, which serves as the workspace a glove and sleeve assembly, a tool pouch, an entry ports for a water wand and a HEPA vacuum, and a debris chamber for waste isolation. Glove bags are available in a variety of shapes and sizes, so it's easy to find a configuration that matches the needs of virtually any project. Single glove bags are designed to fit over short lengths of horizontal pipe and are well suited to maintenance activities such as gasket replacement, valve repair, or small-scale abatement. Avail Quick Twist Extended Run Glove Bags are designed for large-scale abatement or longer sections of pipe. Extended run design increases productivity and safety because they eliminate multiple bag setup time and reduce fiber release. Quick Twist Extended Run Glove Bags come in rolls of up to 20 chambers. Depending upon the length of pipe to be treated, users can cut off as many chambers as necessary to complete the job. A full roll of extended run glove bags can cover 90 feet of pipe. Well-designed glove bags are equipped with a number of features designed to enhance productivity and protect workers. Look for the following when selecting a glove bag. Pre-cut openings eliminate the time-consuming and cumbersome process of slitting the sides and tape reinforcement prior to attaching the glove bag. Fitted collars allow quick, secure attachment to pipes. Fitted collars speed up installation, prevent leakage, strengthen attachment points, and eliminate bunching that can trap debris. Glove bag material must be at least 6 mils in thickness to ensure strength and bag integrity and provide seamless bottoms on the glove bag where it receives the most pressure. A bag with seams may break open under a heavy load. An airtight seal where the glove sleeve assembly joins together. Entry ports that facilitate quick, fiber-tight attachment of the vacuum and sprayer wand. Proper glove sleeve positioning is critical to ensure the weight of debris doesn't rest on workers' arms. Large work area so the worker has freedom and space to access the full circumference of the pipe. Twistable debris chamber, so the waste can be isolated and removed easily from the glove bag work area. Once you have selected the proper glove bag, you must provide yourself with personal protection equipment and supplies. Protecting yourself from the dangers of asbestos fibers is the most important step in glove bagging. Each glove bag operation should have at least two trained and certified abatement workers. There must be one certified abatement supervisor on each site. Every worker at an asbestos abatement site must be equipped with the following personal protective gear. Disposable coveralls with a built-in hood. Pullover work boots. Work gloves for all tasks outside of the glove bag a hard hat, eye protection, high efficiency particulate air or HEPA filtered respirator. Different types of respirators are required depending upon the exposure levels you will encounter. Consult with a qualified industrial hygienist to determine what type of protection factor is needed. You will also need the following supplies and tools for glove bagging. A high quality duct tape, which is used to seal the bag to the pipe and for many other functions. Warning signs and barricade tape to demarcate the area and warn passersby that an asbestos danger is present and to keep them at a safe distance from the removal site. Surfactant enables water to saturate asbestos containing insulation and reduces the amount of airborne particles. 
encapsulant locks down fibers that remain on the pipe after abatement. A pump-up type sprayer to apply the surfactant and encapsulant. A vacuum cleaner equipped with a HEPA filter to safely remove contaminated air from the glove bag and clean up the worksite. A roll of 6 mil clear polyethylene to use as a drop cloth under the pipe. It can also be used to wrap a pipe whose insulation is damaged or very brittle. This prevents fibers from being released into the air during glove bag installation. Asbestos disposal bags are required to remove the asbestos waste and contaminated work materials. These bags should be well marked to identify the asbestos hazard and must comply with all regulations. Personal air sampling pumps to sample air in a worker's personal breathing zone as well as room air must be tested at regular intervals during asbestos abatement. The sampling pumps are typically supplied and operated by an industrial hygienist who contracts independently with a building owner. For work inside the glove bag, you will need 10 snips and pliers to cut the metal jacketing or wires that are found on most pipes, flexi wire saw to cut through the insulation, a retractable utility knife to cut the cloth jacketing, a tape measure to calculate the number of glove bags needed. Scrub brushes and scrapers to clean the pipe. A smoke test kit to check for leaks at taped areas. A woven bag that covers the sharp metal jacketing and wires to protect the glove bag. Once you have all of the required supplies and tools, you are ready to prepare the job for glove bagging. After taking an inventory of your supplies, shut off HVAC and or ventilation fans. Tag and lock out access to control panels. Next, put on your personal protective gear, beginning with the coveralls. Use duct tape to secure the ends of the sleeves to your wrists. Put on your boots, gloves, and respirator. Next, mark off the work area with barricade tape, leaving a wide margin around the abatement area. If there are doors or windows accessing the work area, you must set up critical barriers. Lock doors and windows and cover with a layer of polyethylene sheeting. Post asbestos warning signs prominently to notify workers and passers-by of the asbestos hazard. In some cases, it will be necessary to construct a decon facility adjacent to the work area. The decon consists of an equipment room, shower, and clean room. Contaminated workers and equipment enter at one end and are decontaminated in the shower area before exiting the work area through the clean room. Now you are ready to begin the glove bag setup. Roll out the polyethylene sheeting and position an adequate length under the pipe as a drop cloth. Carefully vacuum the pipe with a HEPA vacuum cleaner to remove any asbestos dust. Vacuum the pipe you plan on abating and the adjacent pipe that may come to contact with workers or be affected by vibrations from the removal process. If the insulation is friable, that is, if it crumbles easily, Wrap the pipe with a layer of polyethylene sheeting and wrap the area of pipe adjacent to the work area with two layers of 6 mil poly to prevent release of fibers during the project. Secure it by wrapping it with duct tape in a candy stripe pattern. Next, measure the length of pipe to be abated. To determine the number of chambers to cut from the roll, consult the chart on the back of the Avail brochure. Unroll the approximate length of Avail Quick Twist glove bags. Plan to allow a small amount of slack in each glove bag chamber so that you can easily access the full diameter of the pipe. Using a utility knife, cut the glove bag at the collar that separates the chambers. Place the required tools in the tool pouch of the chamber or chambers where the work will begin. One of the advantages of a Veil Quick Twist Extended Run glove bags is that multiple chambers can be used simultaneously. Setup time efficiency is increased due to the elimination of repetitive tasks. One large bag setup versus multiple single bags could save you up to 40% in labor. The next step is to install the glove bag. Take each end of the bag 
and lift it to the pipe. Move along the glove bag and pull the opening around the pipe. Overlap the ends, but don't pull them taut. Tack the bag in place with small pieces of duct tape, beginning with the first chamber in the glove bag run. Lay the seam flat and seal the bag opening from one end to the other with duct tape. Duct tape should not come in contact with pipe insulation during this step. Leave openings where pipe hangers are located. Return to the start of the run. Gather the open collar around the pipe and seal it tightly to the pipe with several layers of duct tape. Repeat the procedure at the far end of the glove bag. Attach the end according to the maximum work area. There should be some slack. This extra space will be important to comfortably access the contained work area when removing glove bag chambers. Then, seal the collar to the pipe with several layers of duct tape. Attach the glove bag where pipe hangers occur by carefully cutting with a utility knife and carefully sealing with duct tape. Loosely support the collars between chambers using either lengths of duct tape or straps. Leave room enough to reach the insulation that runs through the collars. Now, test the glove bag tape seals for integrity using the smoke test kit. First, tightly cinch off the collar in the first compartment using the strap or duct tape. Insert the smoke generator through one of the entry ports and introduce just enough smoke to fill the chamber. Remove the smoke generator and seal the entry ports with duct tape. Gently squeeze the bag and watch for escaping smoke at the tape seals. Seal any leaks with additional duct tape and uncinch the collar. Repeat this procedure for each glove bag chamber before working on it. Should the glove bag become punctured during any part of the asbestos removal, quickly repair it with duct tape. Fill the sprayer with surfactant. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for details on mixing and using the surfactant. Insert the HEPA vacuum and wetting wand of the pump sprayer through the entry ports. Seal each to the entry port socks with duct tape. You are now ready to remove the insulation. Put your hands and arms into the first glove sleeve assembly. Generously wet the insulation with surfactant. Using tin snips, cut any banding or wires that hold the jacketing in place. Carefully remove the jacketing, especially if it's made of metal. The sharp edges can cut the glove bag. Fold the jacketing inward so no sharp edges are exposed. Some contractors insert woven bags to hold the jacketing materials and protect the glove bag. Gently lower the jacketing to the bottom of the bag. Wet down the insulation again with surfactant. It is important to keep the insulation wet to decrease the amount of asbestos particles released into the air. If the insulation is too firmly attached to the pipe, it may be necessary to use a flexi wire saw to cut through the insulation. Lift the insulation off the pipe and lower it to the bottom of the bag. Be sure to remove the insulation that extends into the collar. Typically, insulation attaches to pipes in semicircular segments. Insulation is typically installed in three foot or one meter sections. So if you are careful to find the seam, you can easily remove the insulation intact. Unless the insulation is severely deteriorated or friable, these segments usually come off easily. One of the benefits of extended run glove bags is the ability to work a continuous piece of pipe, reaching between chambers. Thoroughly scrape or chip off the remaining asbestos using a scraper. Once the insulation has